Welcome to Michelle's Making. Hope you're ready for coffee, crafts, cookies, and cocktails. Let's get going. Welcome, and welcome back to those of you who are returning. I really do appreciate that. A big thank you to all my subscribers. I do hope you'll consider subscribing if you haven't already and share with your family and friends. Today is National Left Handers Day. So to all you left-handed out there, it's your day. And you know what they say, only left-handed people are in their right mind. I've got two left-handed people in my family. I have my youngest son and his daughter are also lefties. It's also National Prosecco Day and National Filet Mignon Day. Oh my goodness, Filet Mignon. Mmm, that's delicious. A great cut of meat. So maybe that's in store for dinner tonight. And also a shout out to my oldest son, who is having a birthday tomorrow. And also my nephew, whose birthday it is tomorrow. Remember I mentioned that we have a few people who have the same birthday in our family? Well, that's another two right there. So Happy birthday to you. Make it a safe and great one. All right, everyone, let's enjoy our coffee. French vanilla creamer is the coffee of the day, and let's get going. Well, we're not making cookies today, but we're still cooking. We're going to make a delicious tomato pie using mayonnaise, Roma tomatoes, shredded cheese. It calls for sharp shredded, but you can use any kind, onion, bacon bits, and prepared pie crust shells seasonings of your choice. I use garlic, the Badia everything seasoning, some salt, pepper, and basil. Slice your tomatoes fairly thick, almost a quarter of an inch, and place them on a paper towel because you want to draw some of that moisture out. So after you slice all your tomatoes up, sprinkle them with salt and let them sit out for at least a half hour on the paper towels. I used a paper towel on the top before salting to kind of draw a little of that extra fluid out. Once that is done, you're gonna slice up your onions. Now, slice them pretty thin. You can use a white onion or a purple onion like I did here. And get that uh, sliced up thin, like I said, paper thin almost, and then chop those pieces up too. You don't want big pieces of onion, but you do want to be able to sprinkle it throughout. Take your pie shells at room temperature. It's really important that they're at room temperature before you unroll them because they'll start to break if you don't. Now the crust is my favorite part of any pie really. And I had read that you could double the pie crust to make a thicker pie crust. So I decided to give it a try with this recipe. Now in the end, I don't think I would do this again in the future, but it did turn out okay. You just put one pie crust on top of the other and place it in your pie pan, crunch this, or crimp, not crunch, crimp the sides with your thumb and forefinger and your thumb on your other hand. I did poke some holes just to let some steam escape when it was cooking. And once this is all prepared, you're going to season your tomatoes with whatever spices you prefer. Like I said, I'm using garlic, everything, seasoning, and pepper. The basil I mixed in with the mayonnaise and the cheese. The sharp shredded cheddar is probably the most common use for tomato pies but you can use any kind of shredded cheese. And I had several packets of cheese. I had a Colby Jack mix, a mozzarella, Parmesan, and shredded that were all towards the bottom of the uh, bag. So I decided to mix them all together and make this a mixed cheese tomato pie. The complete recipe will be in the description box. Now this process is similar to making lasagna. You're gonna layer your tomatoes and then your mayonnaise and cheese mixture, tomatoes, mayonnaise and cheese mixture on up until you reach the top of the pie shell. Sprinkle a little cheese on the top before putting it in the oven. Here you see I'm putting a layer of the tomatoes and next I spread a layer of the mayonnaise and cheese mixture and then sprinkle bacon bits and the onions and then repeat this layer and again for a third layer.
I give a final sprinkle of the sharp cheddar cheese on the top and I use a silicone crust protector around the rim of my pies. If this protects the edges of the crust from becoming too well done while the pie is cooking through. This takes about 30 to 40 minutes depending on your oven and it would probably end up with the edges being too well done if in there without protection. So this works perfectly. And there you have it, our delicious tomato pie. The first craft today is a staying alive sign or a please don't die sign that I've put with my plants in the front window. I used a sign I picked up at Dollar Trees. So this, this is us sign, I took it out. And at first I thought, oh, I'm just going to pop out this is us part and flip it over so that I'd have a flat surface for the other side. So I did that first. But then I uh, had to take that part out to paint the frame because I was going to uh, darken this up. This was too light of colored wood for my decor. So I used my antique wax and gave it a dry brushing, well, kind of a heavy dry brushing to darken it up some. First, I did measure the inside dimensions so that I could make my Cricut cutout for it. Here you see I'm painting the sign. And then when I went to put the insert back in, I did decide in the end to take off the paper with the This Is Us. I've seen some crafters try to take this apart and it was really difficult. So I just used my heat gun and went under the paper to release it with the heat. And that worked pretty well. I was able to get it off without too much difficulty. If you do crafting, I'd love to hear about where you get your inspiration from. Now, I watch other crafters. I go on Pinterest, just shopping on websites, Amazon or Wayfair or uh, any of the sites that sell home decor items because that's where I often get my ideas to craft with or in the stores actually. I sometimes go to Hobby Lobby for supplies and look at their decor and figure what could I make or what could I take the pieces they have and turn them into. I'd love to know what you're doing, so let me know in the comments. Once I had the This Is Us removed, I used my adhesive spray and some scrapbook paper to give a background for my sign. The inspiration for this sign came from years ago, anytime I had plants, unfortunately they didn't fare well with my care. But now that I'm retired and I seem to have some time, I thought I could give it a go again. And so far it's doing well. I've got some herbs started that actually sprouted from seeds and a few other clippings that I've got that have survived so far. But I think all the time, please don't die on me to my plants. So this sign was going to be perfect decor to go in my window with my plants. I applied my vinyl decal that I made on the Cricut machine and there you have it. Um, oh, I did take off the hanger on the back and added two little twine hangers because I was going to hang it in the center of my window like this and it, it's really what it needed. The next project is a be safe and hurry back sign and I'm hanging this above my front door. This sign I got from my niece, who ha it had something else painted on it, and it was cute, but it just, I don't know, I felt I could do it up a little bit nicer to make it a little more high-end looking. So I did give it a coating of the Waverly chalk paint in the color ink to cover up the painting that had already been there and did a, white, a dry brushing on the frame with my Rust-Oleum chalk paint in linen white. And once that had dried, I applied my decal again that I made on my Cricut. I should add, my niece gave me this for crafting, not as a gift. Now I did not go over the uh, black background with Mod Podge, which I usually do, but I liked the dull finish and I didn't want it to be glossy. So while I was applying the decal, I was careful to press only on the letters because I didn't want the transfer tape to pull off any of the 
chalk paint off the sign and it it did well uh, there were only a couple of tiny little spots around the be safe that pulled up and i was able to touch that up with the chalk paint the black chalk paint and it isn't even noticeable so it turned out great i'm really happy with how this looks and i wanted something over my front door and I really like this saying of be safe and hurry back because that's how I feel when most people leave my house. Do you all use signage in your home decor? I'd like to know, leave me a comment. Sometimes I see places that are decorated that have lots of signs and for me, it's a little bit of an overkill. I do like signs, but just a few strategically placed works for me. Well, there you have it, our hurry back sign. The next project is a sign as well. Bloom where you are planted, a bloom sign. And this is also going in my front window with all my plants. I took one of these signs from Dollar Tree. This is a Halloween beware sign. And I sanded off the glitter. Now, even sanding off the glitter, which it looks here like it came off completely, there's still a little bit of a raised section of the wording. So I did use that. this as the back of my sign and covered it with some white butcher paper. Now, I actually did cover the back before even completing the front of the sign, which is a little bit off for me. It's a little backwards, but sometimes when I'm crafting, I just get going and work on multiple crafts at the same time and different parts of it and realize I probably shouldn't have, but it turned out just fine. Let me know in the comments how you craft. Do you craft more than one craft at a time or do you work on one thing only until it's done and then start something else? I'd like to know how you do it. On this, I used my adhesive spray again, which works really well for this type of thing and using paper because I don't get any wrinkles at all, which is really nice. Sometimes the Mod Podge will give you some wrinkles in your paper. But I then took a razor knife uh, blade and went around the outside of it and peeled away the excess so I had a nice, clean, smooth edge for the back of my sign. I did use the lightweight spackling from Dollar Tree to fill in the two holes. And once that had dried, I took my sanding block and just sanded lightly, got rid of the excess over the hole. Before painting the sign, I did give it a coat of Mod Podge just to seal it because otherwise it would use a fair amount of paint to get good coverage. But by using the Mod Podge first, um, it took one light coat of the chalk paint. Again, using my handy dandy heat tool, thanks again to my beautiful sister-in-law, Mella, for gifting this to me a while back. It has been a very valuable tool. Once it had dried, I used my Waverly chalk paint in the color ink, that's the black. And you can see here, I didn't use a lot of paint and I got very good coverage. Once this had dried completely, I was able to apply my vinyl decal, again, cut out with my Cricut. I just love this saying of bloom where you are planted because I think it applies to people as well as plants. Once again, I applied the pressure onto the just the letter area to make it a little easier to peel back. And when you're peeling back the transfer tape, it really does work well to kind of go a back and forth, top and bottom, sort of a zigzaggy pull on it as you saw me doing there in the beginning. That just helps it come off so much easier. I did seal the sign with another coat of Mod Podge just to make sure that the vinyl decal had adhered well and it wasn't going to come loose. Once that had all dried completely, I did add a couple of hangers 
on the back and with this I used my jute twine and just made a loop and tied a knot so that I could glue it to the back. And then I also took some thinner uh, jute twine and wrapped it around three or four times at each end for a little decor. And I really liked the way that looked. It pulled it all together and gave a great look for my farmhouse country decor. And that's our bloom sign. Well, you know what time it is now? It's time for that adult beverage. And today I'm going to enjoy a strawberry melon martini. For this, you'll build it in the shaker over ice using melon liqueur, strawberry vodka, and my Jose Cuervo strawberry margarita ready to drink mix. Add everything to the shaker. This is such an easy, martinis are so easy to make and so delicious. But you shake it up and you're gonna pour it into your chilled glass. And once that's done, the only thing left is to enjoy our delicious strawberry melon martini. Well, folks, that's it for another week. Thank you so much for sticking with me. I do appreciate it. I hope you'll consider sharing with your family and friends and help the channel grow. I do appreciate that. Let's make time to stop and smell the coffee. Make it a great week, and I'll see you next Friday.